Hello, in this, sec in this video, what we're going to do is find the volume of a parallel pipette. And in another video, I presented uh, the proof of this formula that we see here. So this formula says, uh, or this is a formula for the volume, and we're finding the volume of this parallel pipette. And what it is, it's uh, the absolute value of the triple product. <clears throat> this is a triple product right here. So that's a triple product, and we'll talk about how we can evaluate that. So diff on a different video, I do a little proof of that, <clears throat> of why that formula works. And a, and a parallel pipe bed is a three-dimensional parallelogram, and it is formed by these vectors A, B, and C. <clears throat> so here, this is... Uh, Really very straightforward. I made up this example on my own. And what we're going to do is find the, the volume of a parallel pipette. And we're just going to plug that into this formula and sort of be done with that. So volume equals absolute value of A dot B cross C. Now, let's figure, uh, you know, unwind this, figure out what, what's going on there. How do we um, evaluate a triple product? Okay, so A dot B cross C is is the following. It is the dot product of A and the cross product of B and C. So what you could do is you could find the cross product, B cross C, get, get a vector, that will be a vector, B cross C will be a vector, and then dot it with A. Uh, we have shown in, in class that this is the same thing as the determinant of those uh, of the matrix, which is which consists of the rows given by A, B, and C. So as I'm showing here, so if I take A, B, and C, and write those as the rows of this matrix, uh, and take the determinant, that is the triple product. Again, this is triple product, and then when we get an answer. To that, when we find out, when we find something, if it's negative, we'll we'll make a positive. Okay, so it's a scalar, so we'll we'll get a number out of this, and so let's just try to be a little bit careful to put the right numbers in. So I'm looking at a is one two zero, b is zero one negative one, and c is negative one one two. So also what we are going to do is, uh, you know, we're going to do the, the determinant. And so that is a little bit new for some people. So what I do is I expand across the first row. You don't have to, but that's what I'm doing. And so I have plus that number one. That's that first entry in the, the first row, first column entry. And I multiply that by a determinant. And the determinant is found by eliminating the row in the column that contains this number one. So you write down the one and then you eliminate the row and column. And here's our two by two determinant, two by two determinant. Then I subtract the next number that comes along, which is two, comes along along the first row. And you subtract, so you always do plus, minus, and then we'll have plus later on. And so, um, and we multiply the two by a two by two determinant, which is found by canceling the row and column containing two. So cancel that out, and we're left with these numbers here. I'll write those down. Zero, uh, okay, so that's shown. And then I add this number, zero, times the determinant, and it doesn't matter at all what this determinant is, because it's gonna be multiplied by zero, but let me just, for completion, I'll do that. So I, I have the zero here, and I cross out the row and column of zero, and that gives zero, one, negative one, one. Okay, so now I have one times this first two by two determinant. How do we, uh, how do we work that out? As we multiply across the diagonal, multiply the one and two, let me put bigger parentheses. Okay, one times two, and then we, Subtract, multiplying by that other uh, diagonal, going the other way. 
sort of forgot the name of what that this this is the main diagonal the other one I forgot the name of but anyway uh, 0 2 subtract these guys here negative 1 negative 1 the reason I forgot is I'm not sure there's a name for it there but anyway I think there might be but anyway this is this is the, the main diagonal we're almost always talking about but we subtract it going this way and then we're going to add zero, but zero is just zero. Okay, <clears throat> so this is two plus one minus two, zero minus one. So that seems to give three plus two, and that's five. So the volume is five. The volume of the parallel of pipette. And if it had been a negative number, say negative five, I would apply the absolute value and the answer would be positive five. So volume is always positive. So it's five, maybe someone would say it's five square, or no, cubic units. Maybe five cubic units. Whatever our units are, meters cubed, centimeters cubed. Okay, so I think that's all we need to do there. I can even, uh, just so it's a little short video, and then I can even uh, finish with everything zoomed out, although, I don't know, it's a little bit small. And I'll just go like that. Okay, finish with that. All right, thank you, bye.